Hail brothers and sisters, my name is Captain Meat Shield, and welcome back to The Last Door, Season 2. We've got a little bit of a, um, kind of, last time on The Last Door previously thing. Uh, just getting through all that. We're starting Episode 2, or Chapter 2. I must forget nothing. Ooh. Who is this? Is this Jeremiah? Or is this one of the other myriad of characters that we found before? What's this? Everything must be set. Okay. What do we need to set? Is there something that needs to be done? Oh, we've got to pull down some stuff here by the looks of things. When the time comes. Right. Give it a yank! And I am visited again. Was it that I yanked? That sounded like a fuse. I don't know. Well, where are we going to be? For a moment, the sky was dark. We heard the calls of a thousand birds. But another sound rose above them. A sound I cannot describe. Ooh. The bloody hell happened in here? Did she explode? What? What just happened in here? Where is Miss Cohn? We are too late. Well, clearly, she's not here. There's just mess. What is all this? It is ashes. Yep, she exploded. Yeah, I agree. Dot dot dot. Chalk. A circle drawn hastily on the floor. She thought it could prevent what she knew was going about to happen, but she was wrong. I think that much is obvious. The windows are covered with wooden planks. It looks as if she was trying to keep something from entering, or something from getting out. I do not know what to make of all this. I do. All right then, Kaufman, you've got the answers. Let's go and find out. Do enlighten us. Excuse you. Ooh, tea on the train. Are you all right, Kaufman? It is nothing, my friend. Just a bit of a cold. Now, my friend, I think we should talk. In light of the events we have recently witnessed, the matter cannot be delayed any further. You must make an important decision. It is not yet too late to go back to our daily lives. If you do not want to continue, you must forget all about your patient, Jeremiah DeVitt. You will have to keep to yourself everything you have learned about the mystery of his disappearance, and never talk about it again. All right, that's it, I'm done, game's over. But should you wish to continue this search, you will need to accept the consequences, whatever they may be. Please do not take this decision lightly. The path ahead is not fit out peril. You know my answer already, Kaufman. I must know what happened to David. Yeah, I think we've all invested enough in this story to want to find out what happened. <coughs> Excuse me. Too much tea. So be it, then. As you may have already realized, this matter involving your patient transcends the limits of psychiatry as we know it. We are not dealing with the effect of trauma or the demons of the subconscious. At least, not in the terms we are used to. We are dealing with something old something dark, a sinister truth that has been buried deep for generations. This man, Alexandre Dupre and his organization, I think they seek to uncover these secrets, and I fear they might have already. Miss Cohn's fate, whatever it was, must be related somehow, but my knowledge of this area is simply not sufficient. We must pay a visit to an old friend. Someone I never thought I would want to see again. The man who introduced me to this extended scientific field of the occult. My mentor, Professor Adam Wright. Alright, let's go and meet him. I'm up for making some new friends. Episode 2, My Dearest Visitor. Are you taking preference, are you? Wickport? Where the bloody hell is that? Okay. Let's go to the right manor, as opposed to the wrong one. 
Uh, ooh, snow. I doubt he is of at this time of day. Perhaps he cannot hear us from the front. Let us try the back door. Oh, -ho! saucy. Ooh, hello. Mrs. Oakwood. She is the manor's housekeeper. Yes? Who is it? Good morning, Mrs. Oakwood. Don't you remember me? Why, Dr. Kaufman, bless my soul, it's been so long I hardly recognize you. How nice to see you again. Allow me to introduce my colleague, Dr. John Wakefield. Is the professor at home? We would like to see him. Oh yes, Doctor, of course. I am quite forgetting myself. Let me take you to him. It really is good of you to come. He receives so few visitors these days, on account of his condition. His condition? Oh, sir, I am right sorry. I thought you knew. The professor, he... He suffers from an ailment afflicting his brain. He's now entirely confined to his bed. That doesn't sound like fun, does it? Professor Wright, you have visitors. One of them is your old friend. Look, look, don't you recognize him? It is your hand, Professor, your old pupil. I reckon he does remember you, your hand. It's been a long time since I have seen him so excited. I will leave you two to talk to the Professor. It may be difficult to keep him on one subject for long, but uh, it does him such a world of good to speak with old friends. Should you need my assistance, I'll be in the backyard. You've probably got to be the nicest, most helpful person that I've met in this entire bloody story. Don't die! Professor? Uncle James, you're back. It is I, Professor. Johann Kaufmann. Where is father? Where has he been taken? He's got a bit delirious, hasn't he? Alzheimer's or something? Dementia, maybe? He suffers from some kind of memory loss. Yes, I'm afraid he will not tell us much in this state. If we could but stimulate his memories. Maybe then he could tell us of his research. Something to unravel the mystery of the playwright. Perhaps. We have few other options in any case. Let us try. Why don't you explore the manor? There may be some object we can use to jog the professor's memory. Meanwhile, I will try and talk to him about the time we researched together. That could also help him remember. Okay, we're going to go and poke around some old guy's house. That sounds like fun. Let's go and see what sort of a lovely view he's got out the window. The snow is falling outside. Okay. I don't assume there's going to be anything in this room directly that I can use. Nope, talking to him isn't going to do me much good, so let's go and have a poke about. See if we can find his uh, stash of porn, and we'll just go from there. Let's go and check every single door now. Alright, it's locked. But at least to the attic, so it's a horror game. It's going to have some sort of attic-based oogly-boogly nonsense. Ugh. Doesn't seem to be too much in here that I can use, so... I imagine I'll have to come back in here at some point, seeing as it gave me access in the first place, but we'll just keep traipsing around and see if we find anything else. What's in this one? That one's locked as well. Okay, we'll go downstairs then. Ooh, this is a nice hallway. Very cozy. I like that chandelier. 8-bit excellence. All right, this pipe seems to be showing up all over the bloody place. I'm going to follow it and see where it leads. Stove. Okay. Hmm. Is there anything I'm going to be able to do with that? Fuck if I know. Another locked door. That one leads to the basement. Oh, perfect. We got everything we need for a good old shit your pants time. And we're back outside again. Hmm. Anything I can do over here? Let's have a look on this side. Big old trees. Ooh, what's this? Ooh, this is like a family graveyard. Empty hole your face should be. Ugh. Oh, lots of people hiding behind masks. What are you all about? The central statue portrays a cloaked figure holding a clay vessel. 
The vessel has a small hole in it, just large enough to see a metal object hidden inside. Okay. When the four remove their masks of lies, the path to the grave will be cleared. Okay, so... Something to do with these statues. You've removed your mask. You've got your face hidden. So there's going to be various different things that I'm going to need to do in order to remove the other masks, I think. Or do I have to replace masks? I can't remember what the thing said. I don't bloody know. Alright. There were some places inside the house that we hadn't checked. I say house, it's a bloody manor. But we'll have a poke about. Again, we'll keep poking about. We're going to poke about until there's nothing left that can be poked. Locked. Of course it bloody is. Hampered at every turn. Oh. Now this is nice. Oh, I want to sit in that armchair and drink scotch. Mmm. Oh, that's good. That's a pleasant way to spend an evening. Lots of books. Tin soldier. Okay. That could be helpful. Let's take you. Hmm. Could it hold some special significance to Professor Wright? Perhaps it will help stimulate his memories. Perhaps it might. I'm not assuming there's going to be much else around. A globe. Okay. Very detailed globe. Oh, okay. Ah, I see. There's going to be some sort of code in this. I don't know. I don't know where this is. I'm assuming there's a very specific combination that needs to be engaged on this. Hmm. I don't know. I will come back when I have more information. I can hear the racket of many birds on the other side of this door. Hmm, that's... slightly disconcerting. Considering the theme we have going with, with birds in this game, I, I don't particularly think a room full of them is going to do me any good. Oh, that's bright. Oh. It's the outside. What's this thing? Strange ornament in the wall. I think I can move it. Well, let's do that. Oh. It's another puzzle. Ooh. Okay, well, what does that do? Not a clue. Let's see if this toy soldier is going to do anything to jog the old fella's memory. Yeah, have a toy soldier. Do you recognize this, Professor Wright? Sergeant Downing was sent to the front. The man that returned was not Sergeant Downing. My dearest visitor, he will know where to look. Oh, what a time we will have. Your visitor? What do you mean, Professor? He will have seen the map, and he will know the Book of Travels. The Book of Travels? Yes, yes, he will work it out. But it must not be too easy, no. But he will find the prize, I'm sure. Prize? What on earth is he talking about, Calvin? Something concealed, something precious. In his adult state, he could have hidden away parts of his research. Hmm. He was always a proud man. He would not easily have forgotten his most groundbreaking book. A sense of its grave importance, at least, would have remained. In his confusion, perhaps he has hold it away somewhere for this dearest visitor of his to find. Why don't you explore the manor? Perhaps something will relate to these latest ramblings. Meanwhile, I will continue my endeavours to revive his memory through conversation. Okay, yeah, that, that sounds like a great plan. I'll just keep rummaging. I'm going to assume none of these doors are still... You know, they're all still locked by the looks of things. Basement, maybe that's opened up? I don't know. No. Hmm. I don't know. Let's go and talk to the housekeeper, because she might have some information. May I ask you something, Mrs. Oakwood? Of course, Doctor. How did the Professor become afflicted? The ailment runs in his family. Mr. Wright suffers from it, as did his father and grandmother before him. 
It is truly a terrible thing, and to think all these years Mr. Wright knew what would become of him. May God have pity on his poor soul. This ailment that runs in Professor Wright's family, do you know what its symptoms are? Well, I can't speak those very long words physicians use, but I can tell you what I see in him. Professor Wright hardly remembers a thing from the last forty years. It's like he's a child again. With God's mercy, it has now gone so far that it torments him no longer. Hmm. Well, Professor Wright mentioned something, the Book of Travels. Do you know what that might be? Why, yes, Doctor. I know that story well, I do indeed. He often asked me to read it to him. The book should be in the library. Well, that's helpful. I'm going to go and rummage around in the library then. There is a large volume here, quite worn. It is an illustrated edition of the Travels of Marco Polo. Perhaps this is the book of travels that Professor Wright mentioned. There is a mark on one of the pages. We began our journey by crossing the unforgiving desert, always facing the setting sun. At last we arrived at the merciful sight of the great ocean. We followed the coast north, in dear hope of reaching our home soon. Ah, uh, I see. Across the desert, facing the set, going west across the desert, arriving at the coast, follow the coast north. Okay. Ooh, okay. It was not to be. The king of the land we traversed had declared war on the Great Khan, so we were forced to return as we had come. We never set foot in that bloody land again. We knew there was a port just a few miles to the south where we could find a boat. Our sea voyage was short, as our sails billowed with the powerful southern winds. We reached the most eastern cape and landed there. Our backs to the sea, we marched forth and soon reached home. Right, let's see if I can figure out this globe then. So... Ah, oh, right, yeah, that's giving me... that's there for me to get hints. Okay. So, across the desert, to the coast, up, and then back down. Yes? Hmm. I don't know. Right, crossing the unforgiving desert, always facing the setting sun. Merciful sight of the great ocean. Right, maybe I need to include all of the pieces on this. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. No? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah! Finally got it out. Got it sorted. Seems I have triggered a hidden mechanism. A small compartment has opened in the globe. And what do you have? A sealed letter. Simply addressed to my dearest visitor. Kaufman needs to see this before it is opened. Okay, well we're going to go and hand it to him. And see what he makes of things. Have a look at this. Look what I found. Kaufman, look. I found an envelope. It was hidden inside a globe that a strange mechanism opened. To my dearest visitor, let us see what is inside. Exactly. This is another part of an intricate riddle. But to what purpose? To conceal something, perhaps? Or just the last acts of a confused and drowning mind? I am increasingly of the opinion that this is some mental construct, some riddle conjured up by the professor's failing mind. He may not have even understood what he hid. Those seeking wisdom must first know their own foolishness. Reflect on yourself in the heat of passion to reveal what the cold eye of logic sees not. Okay, there's a mirror in the next room. Heat of passion. Does that mean I'm going to have to take the housekeeper in a timely fashion? Or am I just going to have to, like, turn the radiators on and have a jolly... A riddle? And who would that visitor be? That is unknown to me, my friend. So there is only one way to answer that question. Yeah, go and have a bash in the bogs. If we can find the answer to the professor's riddle, perhaps we will be able to solve this mystery. Okay. Well, I'm going to assume something needs to be done with that stove because of the heat of the pa heat of passion, and I'm not really doing anything else. Let's try this. Oh, hello. I didn't realise you were here. 
Uh, is Professor Wright fond of riddles? Indeed, yes. He has long been an enthusiast of every mind game you can imagine. In better days, he would host parties every other month. Themed soirees, he called them. Oh, they were good times. Seems long ago now. All right, that'll do. I'm... Yeah, yeah, right, what's this? An old teapot. It's filled with cold water. Okay. Stuff that seems to have changed in here, so I'm going to keep an eye on it. There's a matchbox. Ah, I'll have that. Right. Okie dokie. Uh, can I put the teapot on here? Yes, I can. Stove has plenty of wood. Well, I've got plenty of matches. So let's light a fire. And put the teapot on it. Very nice. The water will cool soon. Well, I'd better get up to the bathroom where there's a mirror, isn't there? Ooh, come on, quickly. I hate it when I've got timed elements in games. Teapot, mirror, go! Because this is logic. Ooh! Reflect on yourself in the heat of passion to reveal knowledge that the cold eye of logic sees not. Condensation from the teapot's steam has revealed a hidden message. I'll add this clue to the letter. Knowing yourself, you may look upon your master, meet his imposing gaze, and seek to understand what lies beneath. Thereby learn the question, if not the final answer. Oh dear, I'm, I'm not prepared for all this. There's, there's a lot going on with all this stuff. Let's see if Kaufman makes anything of this new bit of information. Uh, okay, right. Meet his imposing gaze to seek and understand what lies beneath, thereby learn the question, not the final answer. Oh. I think I might leave it at this. Because... I'm, I'm going to be here for hours otherwise. Right, yes, we're going to leave things off here, I think. Really enjoying this series still. This game really is good fun. It's just, if more than anything, it's fun to get in and kind of assume the role of the characters and, like, do all this silly voices for them and everything. And I hope that if there's uh, anybody from Germany that's watching, I'm not doing too much of a terrible, like, German accent. If I am, let me know and I'll stop, but... I'm having fun with it, so I might keep going. But the series will keep going anyway, so you're not going to be stopping me on that front. And I think Kaufman's probably going to be involved for the majority of it, so you may just get stuck with a really crap German accent for the next few weeks, however long it takes to finish this. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you want to see more Let's Plays or Metal Covers from me, you can check out the playlists that are on the channel, and you can follow the links in the description below to follow me on social medias. But thank you again for watching this video, and I'll catch you all very, very soon. This is Captain Meat Shield, signing off. I think there was a unicorn or something? I don't know. In the trailer it pooped gold. If I can have a unicorn that poops gold, I'm going to be happy with that.